welcome to the Talent Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kira Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create a team. Welcome to the Dental A-Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A-Team listeners. This is Kira, and you guys, let's, let's deep dive if you're ready to deep dive with me today. I have been coming in off of uh, some offices lately. And on those offices, this is something that I did not think was, I thought every office knew that. And I'm starting to realize I've got to start telling you guys some of these little hacks that I've got in my bag. So today, my hack is going to be for you on scheduling. Oh, the bane of my existence is <laughs> scheduling. I feel like when I go into offices, so often I'm hearing about these offices. And what is the number one complaint? The schedule. So I've talked in other podcasts about how to do perfect handoffs, how to use NDTR. So the next visit, the date, the time, and the recare to make sure, doctors, that you're giving us all the tools that we need to be successful to schedule appropriately. That's the proactive part. So now let's dive into um, some hacks of how to schedule and schedule really, really well. So something that I've just started doing again in other offices, gosh, Sorry, I haven't shared this with you guys prior, but it's block scheduling. Dun, 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 dun. Newsflash, block scheduling. Cool. <laughs> but really, this is something that uh, in the last three offices I went to, this was how we were able to really help them out. So with block scheduling, um, in Dentrix, it's called Perfect Day Scheduling. In EagleSoft, it creates little block templates. Uh, I believe it's in the Scheduling Wizard That one's kind of hard. You have to Google where to find that one. Um, And then in Open Dental, you can make templates. I think Open Dental is honestly probably the hardest one, but Open Dental is the easiest in the fact that you can customize every single day. So let's say your schedule changes halfway through the year, makes it a lot easier. Whereas Dentrix and EagleSoft, they just have a, a custom one that automatically goes in. So what we do is we basically have the doctor say, okay, in the morning, I really want to make sure that I'm doing a high production. So anything over, you know, say $1,000, I want that at my 8 a.m. spot and my 1 o'clock spot. So we then can go into our schedule and we can pre-block high treatment in those areas. And it will just create a little block. This is also super handy for your new patients, SRP patients and hygiene. And you can customize it per hygienist and per day. So what I did was I really went through an entire week and mapped out what an ideal schedule looks like. I was doing this for a pedo office. So pedo offices, here's a little nugget for you. My doctor, uh, your dead time in a pedo office is typically from your 10 to 2 zone. Little kiddos don't want to come in. Um, This is also pretty dead time in general practices, not as dead as pedo. But what we did is we actually blocked only our high production was happening during the 10 to 2 zone since that's dead time. So our assistants were being utilized. And then what we did was we, we... massively booked our profies in all columns during the high productive time. And then we would just tell mom like, hey, mom, uh, just so you know, Dr. So-and-so only does treatment during 10 to 2, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, what day works best for you or however you want to do it. That's not my favorite verbiage, but you guys get the point. So with that, um, this block scheduling really can help your team because what it does is it, it puts little blocks on there, color coordinated blocks. Um, I personally love new patients and SRPs in hot pink. I like my high production in lime green. Um, new patients, again, hot, hot pink. You could also do high production is dark blue, whatever it wants. Um, I had a girl who helped write our scheduling course on the dental A team. So if you guys want that, it's a more in depth version of this, but she did it in jewel colors. So like deep blue, deep green. So it's all the jewels of all the different colors. So people would think of those as the higher production. But what you do is when you build this block schedule, ask your doctors of what an ideal schedule looks like. What doctors, where do you want your root canal? Where do you want to put implant crowns? Also, if we're doing multiple columns, we want to be real strategic. I had one office that I did this in where I had two different doctors. And so what I did, because I only have one iTero scanner and they were using that for Invisalign and also for crowns. Well, if I'm doing those at the same time, I mean, it was super convenient for me to put both doctors with the exact same schedule. However, if I'm doing two crowns at the same time, that's not convenient. 
By building out a block schedule or an ideal perfect day schedule, it helps prevent my front office and my back office uh, to put these appointments in areas where we're going to overlap. Is it foolproof? Absolutely not. Is it a great way to help your team start to have a recipe for how to build you a perfect schedule? 100%. One of the main reasons that I love this block scheduling tactic is because it allows the back office team to start scheduling more effectively for front office. Um, I go into a lot of offices and something people say is that, you know, Kira, we, we really need to hire another front office. And I look and I say, well, that's one option. But I think a better option is that we train the back office to start scheduling. It is proven if you present treatment plans chair side, patients are more likely to accept treatment. They're in the zone. They're back there. It's not about money. So I'm really, really, really pro having my back office team proactively schedule appointments. I am so pro this, you guys, because the back office and then especially if I've got a template already for them of where they need to put these appointments, then it helps them out so much better to be able to find those appointments and to be able to have more confident scheduling. This also can help your hygienist because hygienists, a lot of times they could schedule for us, but a lot of times they don't know where the doctor wants this. So think about it in a perfect world. All right. Doctor comes in, does the exam. Doctor says, okay, Kira, I want to get you back for a crown. I want an hour and a half and I want to see you in about two weeks. Thank you, doctor. You just gave us the next visit, the date and the time. You're the best. Get out of the room. We're good to go. We can take it from here. Then the dental assistant or hygienist says, okay, Kira, Dr. So-and-so wants to get you back in about two weeks for an hour and a half for that crown. It looks like I have Wednesday at 3 p.m. next week or in two weeks, whatever the date is. Uh, Let's reserve that time for you. Okay, so the back office is assuming the patient wants the treatment and they're just going for it. They look at the colored blocks. They're not going to put this crown in where there's not a crown spot and they just look for the next open crown block, the blue block or the green block, whatever color your crown blocks are, they look for that. And crowns, it could be crowns, it could be root canals. It's a high production. They know that that's a high production. So when you do that, your back office team can very, very quickly schedule the patient. Once the patient has that appointment, they're much more likely to say yes when finances are presented. They've already said yes to treatment. We've got them scheduled in the back. The back office feels super confident. And then we have our safety check of the front office going over to double check that to make sure that where we just put this patient in is a good spot for the overall flow of the schedule. I will say when back office start scheduling and they start taking over more control of the schedule, we tend to, it's not always, but we tend to start getting better schedules. The back office knows how to schedule and cram and put people in different places to have the best flow of a schedule. For an office, unless they've worked in the back office, they're just not as good and that's not their fault. They've just never done it. They've never seen that, you know what? During those 10 minutes of time, I could put somebody else here and I could get them numb. They've never seen that. So it's not their fault. But when you guys can have the back office start to take control of their own schedule, you start to get a lot of better results. And the easiest way, in my opinion, to do this is to create this perfect day or block scheduling tactic. It really is so simple, you guys. It's seriously like a color by number. Okay, here's where we put the crowns. Here's where we put the fillings. This is where we put crown seats and we don't jam pack extra crown seats in there. We only do two to four a day, however many your doctor says, depending upon how many columns you have and how many doctors are being seen that day. This can help for a small practice, a solo doctor with one hygienist. It can help for an extremely large practice of four doctors and 12 or 15 hygienists, however you do it. And what's super awesome is if you put these templates in place, you start to block new patient spots for the future. You're blocking your crowns, all of that. So the way I recommend if you're like, okay, Kira, I love this. Like, how do I start? The way you do it is the first step. Doctor, you need to create the ideal schedule. Where do you want your crowns? Where do you want your root canals? Where do you want your implants? Where do you like your fillings? How many crown seats do you want per day? I know you hate the quads of fillings at the end of the day. Fantastic. Don't have us put those quads of fillings at the end of the day. You just do, I don't know, maybe you just do crown seats at the end of the day. You're tired. You don't want to do anything else. We put crown seats in at the end of the day. I don't care how you do it. And what you can do is as a doctor, you can go out. I usually go about seven months from today's date and I'll go play around on the computer and just block with events or you can use this template, however you want to do it, of what a perfect schedule would look like for you. So map out your perfect day. And I would suggest usually your Monday, Wednesday, Friday follows a flow. Maybe your Tuesday, Thursday follows a flow. Um, And if every single day is a little bit different, you're going to want to make sure that you have it scheduled for every day. So like for us, and when I was in a practice, 
our Mondays were early starts, our Tuesdays were late starts, Wednesday was a normal day, Thursday was a late late day, and Friday was just straight through. Well, none of those days follow the same pattern, so I needed to make a perfect schedule for each one of those days. Um, so doctors, you need to go, I'd say seven months out, and go make your perfect schedule for us as your team. So now, once a doctor does that for us, we as team members can create what I call a perfect day schedule. That's Dentrix, um, EagleSoft, however it is, and you go and start making all these blocks in there. It's not hard, I've done it in every single software. Every single software is just a smidge different, but you can do this in every single one of them. If you need help, always email me, hello at thedentalateam.com. I'm happy to walk you guys through this. Also, Google is real fantastic on this one. Open Dental, you have to copy each day. <laughs> so please don't be like I was when I first started doing an Open Dental, where I literally would recreate this every single day. Nope, you can actually just copy the templates per day, and then you'd copy Monday and go fill in all the Mondays for the rest of the year. Then all the Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. For people that are on Dentrix or EagleSoft, you do have to make that template day specific. So that makes it a little more challenging for you, meaning that I have to look to see, okay, I have a little bit different schedule on Thursday, so I have to get a little more strategic of where I'll put these blocks. I can't just put them in at eight o'clock. It's just a little bit different. But schedulers, when you go to make this schedule, I suggest that you go and you put the schedule in seven months out. Same thing. So that way you can look to see, oh, dang it, I didn't put it in on this day right, or I didn't do this one right. Um, I go seven seven months out or wherever there aren't patients already scheduled, so I can look to see what this looks like on an ideal week. Once you get that done, then it should go for every single day that you have there. You'll want to make sure it's on every single computer and every single operatory. Then you'll want to have a meeting with your entire team and talk to them. I've literally printed out this template. So the way I do it when I coach in an office is I make all these perfect day schedules, meaning there's all these little outlined blocks. So again, new patients, SRPs, those are hot pink. High production for me is lime green. Crown seats are usually yellow. Limiteds could be yellow, but my like quick 30 minute appointments are there. I have it all templated out. So literally I could print, say seven months from today, I print that day out and all it will have are these colored little blocks for me. So there's no appointments there. I just have all these colored blocks. Then what I do is I run a meeting with the entire team and we talk about definitions for all these blocks. So I print one of these blank template schedules out, give it to every team member, and we literally sit there and talk about, okay guys, what exactly is a high production? What is a low production? What would we put in this filling spot? It's an hour long. What could we put there? It's not just fillings. There's other procedures we could put there. Um, what happens if we have another crown seat that wants to come in that day? Well, too bad. We've already filled up the crown seats. We don't do anything here. So then I have everybody define what each one of these boxes are. So that way they can start doing it. And then I actually have everybody practice. So then I say, okay, guys, I have a root canal, molar root canal. What time of the day can I put this molar root canal in? They'll look at their little schedule after we've defined it. And they'll tell me, you know, we could do it at 10 o'clock in column one. Fantastic. You're exactly right. That fits into the block that Dr. So-and-so wants. Beautiful. Now let's practice verbiage with our patient. So we're in the back operatory. How are we going to talk to this patient? How do we get this patient to go where we want them to go? So when you're doing this, guys, don't forget that if I ask them, <laughs> my favorite is when people say like, okay, Kira, we need to get you scheduled for that crown. What day works really well for you? Oh, fantastic. You just set an expectation that I'm going to have to break your heart when I tell you that day doesn't work for our schedule. Instead, take control of that conversation and say, okay, Kira, doctor wants to see you in two weeks. It looks like I've got Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Let's reserve that for you. Notice I said very specific words. Hey, Kira, doctor wants to see you back in two weeks. I've got Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Let's reserve that time for you. I'm assuming that you're going forward with it. I used my keywords that the doctor wants to see you back in two weeks. So I'm uh, reiterating what the doctor just said in the doctor's exact same words. Thank you, doctor, for saying that exactly the way we want you to. That way the patient hears it again from me. And I said, let's reserve that time for you. If we do the reverse of, hey, care what day works well for you, then we start playing the game of the scheduling struggle where patients are going to say, you know, I can't come in. And you notice the first thing that they say is, I can't do this day. That we've already got our patient into a negative zone, not a positive zone. When you guys think about it, if, if I have to come back for a crown and you say, care what day works well for you, the first thing going through my head is all the appointments and all the reasons I can't come to the practice. So instead of giving them the option of, hey, what day works well for you? I'm not saying we don't do that. Go for where your doctor already does it. Or you can use the phrase of, hey, 
Dr. So-and-so um, does his root canals or does her root canals um, usually in the morning. Let's reserve Wednesday at 10 o'clock for you. That's when you'll get the best results. Notice again, key phrases, the best results. So those are some little quick, quick phrases. That's what I have the back office start to do because the back office can get confident with this. And literally, you guys can use this podcast as a, a role play demo for your office to get this perfect scheduling down because if your whole team can schedule like 85 to 90% exactly the same and we can get our patients into the schedule, it makes the front office's job so much easier. We have a better patient experience and overall better treatment in our practice. So I'm really, really big on then role playing out with every single person in the practice, making sure that they all feel confident getting patients to schedule where they need to go. So I have them build a whole schedule. Once I do this, so I'll shout out a bunch of different procedures. Okay, we've got a crown that needs to go in. We have a crown seat that needs to go in. We had a limited just call in. Where do we put this limited? And I have the whole team looking at this schedule with the templates after we've defined it, telling me where we can build this. So then I have another separate sheet. So I'll have two blank templates. One we define. The second one, I have them actually filling in all these different procedures. Then I have them go pair up with their friend and I have them talk about why they'd put a patient there. I also have them role play. Okay, guys, it's going to be the person on the left. The person on the left, I want you to schedule the person on the right for a crown in two weeks. How are you going to get them to schedule? All right, Kara, let's get you scheduled. Let's get you scheduled. Let's get you scheduled. And I literally have them like practicing. Let's get you scheduled. Let's get you scheduled. Let's get you scheduled. Because by doing so, your team gets into the habit of how to say this. Hygienists can do this. Dental assistants can do this. Front office Yes, I understand that I am putting more on quote unquote the back office than I am on the front office. However, this is done very strategically to actually help the back office. Back office has complained to me more so that the schedule is so hard for them and it's always a mess. Well, guess what back office? I just created a solution for you where you no longer have to complain about that. You can actually have this amazing schedule because you're helping to build it. You look at it and you're scheduling your patients in there and it just wins all the way around. Patient has a better experience. The back office has a better experience. The front office can just present treatment plans. We don't bottleneck around the front office and we can actually hire more team members for the back office instead of jam packing our whole payroll into the front office where we just utilize our our teams better. So this is something that you guys, if you wanna try it out, try the block scheduling. It only will work if every person on your team is on board. The second we think that we're above the law for the blocks or we start moving those blocks around or we don't use the verbiage of, hey, Dr. So-and-so does their crowns at this time. Let's reserve this time for you. The minute we break away from that is the second this whole thing falls apart. But if you will follow this, you will have a more productive, less chaotic, less stressful and happier patient and employee experience if you follow this because everyone's on the same page. We've just built a roadmap for a perfect schedule. I've walked you guys through exactly how I do it in offices how you as doctors can help out, how office managers, team members, every single person on the team can participate in this activity and you guys can all get there together. What's really awesome is you can also then have a very productive day that's not chaotic. You get rid of those days that have a thousand crown seats and you're like, what is going on? You stop having the days where you start your day out on a zero dollar production. That day's a rough day. We have the days where we stop letting patients dictate the schedule and we become incredible word ninjas helping patients go exactly where we want. Because think about it, we struggle. Patient, like Employees don't want to tell a patient, you know, no, doctor doesn't see patients at the time. Well, guess what? If doctor was out of town, you would have no problem, no problem whatsoever telling that patient that doctor can't do the appointment at that time. Correct? Correct. I know you would. You'd be like, well, doctor's out of town. But just because doctor doesn't do a crown at the end of the day, because they know that they're not as fresh, they know that it's more hectic, it's stressful, they don't get as good of results. Why do we struggle as team members to be okay to tell our patients that? It's no different. We just have to train ourselves. We just have trained ourselves that, you know, we'll accommodate the patient wherever they go. No, if we follow this scheduling, I promise you, and you know that you will give a better patient experience, the patient will get better results. Could we throw them in at the end of the day? For sure. Is that where they're going to get the best results? I don't think so. You guys better believe when I'm going in for surgery, I am the first patient on the books because I know that's when the doctor is going to be the best. So you just use your words, get, become a word ninja. Dr. So-and-so loves to do their crowns at the beginning of the day. That's when they get the best results. Let's reserve that time. As a patient hearing that, guess what? I'm going to go in that spot. You are going to t- word ninja your way to building a perfect schedule, giving your patient a better experience. 
I don't care if that's not like, sure, could we see them at the end of the day outside of the block? Yes, you could. Is that where they'll get the best results? Not necessarily. So let's put them in the spot where they're guaranteed the best set of results and give our patients the best experience. All right, guys, go try block scheduling. Use this podcast. I truly make this where you could seriously stop, hit play. This is a 20 minute podcast for you. You can have your whole team do this over an hour lunch meeting or whenever you have your meetings, hopefully not over lunch. Hopefully you guys have learned not to do them over lunch. Um, But this way you guys can all practice scheduling. I would recommend probably about an hour meeting and then follow it up with another hour. But practice this. Practice, guys. It's so much easier. And this really can help you guys get over that massive scheduling hurdle. I've done it in so many practices. So here's your guys' tactical practical. Hope you loved it. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our Dental Team family. Now we're going to take it to the world. So help us out. Help us positively impact the world of dental by leaving us a review, leaving us five stars. This is how we can spread it to the masses and help even more people grow to a better version of themselves. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for being a part of my Dental Team family.